In this video, I want to provide an introduction to rejection sampling. So rejection sampling is a way to generate independent samples from a probability distribution function or probability density function that is potentially unnormalized. And also, whilst I'm illustrating this example for a continuous parameter problem, you can also use rejection sampling for discrete examples, but it's most commonly used for continuous parameter problems, and so that's how I'm going to illustrate it here. So the example that I'm going to use to illustrate how rejection sampling works is that where we're imagining that we're trying to generate samples from an exponential distribution with rate parameter 1. And by writing down the form of the distribution, we can work out the exact form of the density just by looking up that of an exponential distribution, rate parameter 1, and it's just equal to e to the minus x. One thing that's important to bear in mind is just because I have an analytic form of the density, it doesn't mean that you can independently sample from that density. Or put another way, the PDF tells us what the histogram of our samples should look like, but it doesn't tell us how to generate those samples in the first place. So rejection sampling is a way, given a PDF, to allow you to generate independent samples. And I should really be saying pseudo-independent samples in all of this, because, of course, computers are deterministic machines, and so whilst it might appear that you're generating independent samples, really these are following some deterministic routine, which is seeded, which gives the impression that you're generating a series of random samples. So we can draw the form of the PDF for an exponential distribution with rate parameter 1, it just looks something like this downward sloping line that I'm drawing, and it's an exponentially decreasing line, which looks something like this pink one. And just in case you're wondering, the y-axis here is just p of x, the density. So how would we do rejection sampling for this particular example? Well, the idea is that we would generate some uniformly distributed x between 0 and, let's say, 8, Ideally, we would go between 0 and infinity because that's the range of the exponential distribution. But in practice, somewhere like x being equal to 8, any values above that are very, very unlikely. So we're just trying to approximate this density. Choosing x being equal to 8 is a reasonable upper limit here. So what we're trying to do is, is or what we're going to do is we're going to generate an xi, which is uniformly distributed between 0 and 8. And to do that, we're going to use the computer's inbuilt pseudo-random number generator for a uniform distribution, because all computers tend to have that. I should say that most statistical programs tend to have also a capacity to generate samples or random samples from an exponential distribution, but I'm using this example to illustrate how you might do that if there wasn't a off-the-shelf sampler available for your distribution. Okay, so we generate an x value between 0 and 8, then we generate a y value which is uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. So that's the range of the function. So we generate some y which is uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. And then the routine that we follow is if the y value that we generate is less than the PDF corresponding to that x value, then in that case, we accept the value of x i as a sample from our distribution, else we reject x i. And the idea is that we run this routine a large number of times, and after we've run the routine a large number of times, that generates us a sample of accepted x value. So we might accept the first sample that we take, then the seventh, for example, etc. So what would this look like on our plot here? Well, the idea is that we would generate a large number of points and uniformly in our kind of interval between 0 and 8 for x and 0 and 1 for y. And these might represent our rejected points. They might look something like that. And then we also might generate 
some accepted points, which might look something like this. Of course, the order would be different here to the way I've just drawn these here. But after you run your sampler, let's say sort of 10 or 15 times, however many points we have here, we might get a collection of points which look something like the accepted case being the sort of distribution of blue points and the rejected cases being the distribution of orange crosses. Now I want to illustrate how rejection sampling works in practice by showing the result of some simulations in Mathematica. So on the left-hand plot here, I'm just going to plot the position of the randomly sampled x and the randomly sampled y, and I'm just going to show you all of those points. So I'm starting off here with a single point, and on the right-hand plot, I'm showing the exponential density with rate parameter 1, and I'm going to colour the point according to whether or not we accept those points as our samples. And for this first point here on the right, that corresponds to exactly the same position as that on the left, we're actually going to reject this point because the y value of that point actually exceeds that corresponding value of the PDF, which is at this sort of height here. So if I run this now, we see that we're generating a large number of points uniformly from our range. And what we can see on the right here is that we are rejecting the vast majority of them. So we can see that rejection sampling is actually relatively inefficient. But nonetheless, we are generating some samples from our given density. If I now show you the same, but over a different time scale, generating many more points, you can see how if we take, in this case, I think it goes up to 10,000 samples from uniformly for x between 0 and 8 and uniformly for y between 0 and 1, that eventually we're building up a reasonably large base of samples here from our exponential distribution. And just to be clear here, the points that would act as samples here would be the x values of our points. So you can see if we draw a histogram of that data, then the histogram looks something like this blue histogram that I've drawn here, which is in good accordance with the corresponding exponential PDF. And I've just shown on here all of the rejected points. So you can see just how inefficient rejection sampling can be. The last example was interesting in that it showed that we could use rejection sampling to sample from an exponential distribution. That required us to use the statistical software's inbuilt pseudo-random number generation for a uniform distribution. But as I said, in many statistical programs, they all have inbuilt exponential random number generators. And so it's perhaps not as interesting as it could be. Suppose instead that we want to generate random samples, independent samples from this density which I've shown here, which is a kind of trigonometric function. And this case, I've actually had this function here as being unnormalized. So imagine that we don't know the normalizing constant for this distribution, but nonetheless, we want to generate random samples from it. How can we do so? Well, we see that essentially our x value is, is a sort of between 0 and I think it was 4 pi here, so just over 12. And the y values are between 0 and 1. So we're going to do the similar th sort of thing to what we did before. We're going to generate x uniformly at random between 0 and 4 pi and pair them up with y values. And we are going to accept that point if the y value is less than the corresponding PDF value. So if I now show how this works for actually 10,000 samples, we can see that as we run our rejection sampling algorithm, that after relatively few samples, our sampling distribution is starting to look pretty good. It's starting to very much echo the shape of the underlying PDF. And eventually, if I run this sampler for long enough, I think I run it up to 10,000 samples, we get a very good correspondence. And so we can see that there's a high density of points in the kind of blue regions here. And then if we just look at the sampling distribution for the accepted points, we see a high correspondence between the histograms and the underlying sampling distribution that we're trying to generate random samples from. So in summary, rejection sampling is a way of generating independent samples from a PDF, which can be normalized, it can be unnormalized. 
I should say in passing that you can also use independent sampling for discrete distributions. It's just that most of its usefulness comes with continuous distributions. We've seen that with relatively modest numbers of points in this univariate case, we're able to generate samples independently from a given PDF. However, what we've seen is that rejection sampling is by its very nature quite wasteful. It rejects many more points typically than we actually accept. And as we shall see, this issue with rejection actually gets worse the more dimensions our density actually has.